Hi, I'm Leon, and I'm going to present our work on optimal virtual network embeddings for tree topologies. This is joint work with Alexander, Rolf, Matthias, Stefan, and Philip. Suppose you want to order some machines in the cloud for some service. Then usually you specify how powerful you want the machines to be, and you're going to be guaranteed that these machines are indeed that powerful. But sometimes, you also require lots of communication between those machines. And the thing is that in classic cloud computing, you don't get any guarantee on the network performance. So this is different with virtual networks. Virtual networks allow you to also model communication requirements. And thus, if you use virtual networks, you can give guarantees on network performance. Now the challenge is, how do I actually embed the virtual networks into my physical network, also called substrate, such that all the requested requirements are fulfilled? So here I have a physical network with four machines, one, two, three, four, and also some interconnecting, uh, some interconnections or edges, and each of these have some capacities and some cost. And I now need to map the virtual nodes onto the substrate nodes. For example, I can map both A and B onto my physical node V. And then the virtual edges, I can map also onto paths within the substrate. For example, I map the edge AD onto the path from V via X, W to U. And all of that I have to do in such a way that all the capacities in the substrate are requested, but of course the requested performance is also met. And I want to embed this into my substrate in a cost-minimizing manner. This talk deals with how to find such a virtual network embedding in an algorithmic manner. And of course, this has been done plenty already in uh, other research areas. And the truth is usually if you have such a substrate, then you won't have a single request, but you'll have to handle a plethora of requests. So how do we usually deal with this? So there are certain uh, scenarios here. You could, for example, um, look at the whole problem in an offline manner in which you would just take all of your request graphs that you have and build a union out of them and try to map this new big request. And in this area, there exists a lot of um, algorithmic approaches on how to do this. For example, there are some exponential time approximations with some performance guarantees uh, and also very classically some integer programming formulations that um, uh, also provide some optimality. And also there are plenty of heuristics. Maybe one that is worth mentioning is the Vine heuristic by Chad Hurry. Of course, usually you don't know about all of your requests beforehand, but usually you're more in an online setting. So requests are given one after another and they must be embedded into the substrate at the very moment. And here even and others provide a way on how to do this, given an algorithm for the offline variant, and uh, prove a nice competitive ratio. And to mention something that is even more relevant for today's data centers, uh, we may look at uh, the work of Manza and others on congestion minimization. Herein, you want to map the request in such a way that the maximal load in the whole substrate is minimized. And of course, there are many more flavors of virtual network embeddings and variants. But in the end, all of them have one thing in common. In order to somehow provide some algorithm, you first need to be able to map a single request onto your substrate in some efficient manner. So the problem at heart is also the problem that we are going to discuss in this talk, is the classic virtual network embedding problem. You're given a request graph, which is here on the left side, and a subset graph here on the right side, and some demands, which are on the edges and nodes of the request, 
capacities, which are on the edges and nodes of the substrate, and costs, which are also on the substrate. Now the task is to find a mapping of the request nodes onto the substrate nodes, such as this one, and a mapping of the request edges onto paths within the substrate. For example, the blue edge here is mapped onto this blue path, such that all the node and edge capacities are respected. Take, for example, this substrate edge here. We have the blue path and the orange path going along it, which both have a demand of one, and we have a capacity of two right here. And the cost, nude, the cost that is used by all of the nodes and edges overall is minimized. It doesn't come as a surprise that this problem is NP-hard. Indeed, it is even NP-hard to approximate in many special cases. And what maybe comes as a surprise a bit more is that so far we haven't heard of a combinatorial exact algorithm and this is where we come to into play. We provide a combinatorial exact algorithm that works for tree substrates and is highly efficient if the request graph is not too large. The algorithm is pretty simple and very robust. And this allows for more general models also than the one that we introduced. We can also deal with directed graphs and multi-dimensional demands and capacities and cost. And we can also deal with a list of prohibited mappings, for example, and possibly even more generalizations. Along with the algorithm, we also bring some hardness results or some bad news. And with these, we can show that there's very little hope for improving this parameter, this R, the, num the size of the request graph or the nodes of the request graph. We cannot hope for something, an algorithm that somehow has a smaller exponent. And also, there's little hope for relaxing the tree constraint. That is, we probably cannot measure, and we cannot use some measure that, that describes how tree-like the substrate is going to be, or something like that. And these little hopes also hold, even if you would allow for some solutions with only approximation guarantees and not exact solutions. And maybe for some, the worst news of all is that we have an algorithm that only works if the substrate is a tree. But here I bring some good news. These tree topologies are not actually that uncommon. In many data centers, we are, going, we are faced with so-called fat tree topologies, displayed here on the left-hand side, where we have a list of nodes down here, some compute nodes, and these are connected with a tree-like or fat tree-like um, number of switches. And we can use a forwarding abstraction that looks like this. And basically, we can model the incredible uh, list of interconnections here by one interconnection that has a lot of capacity. So let me tell you how this algorithm works. And here, again, we are very happy to work with trees because they have one very nice property. Whenever I look at two nodes in a tree, I know that there's exactly a single path between these two nodes. And why is this good news? This is because once we map the nodes onto the substrate graph, we know exactly which, which edges are going to be used by this mapping. Or even more specifically, whenever I map two adjacent nodes in my, of my request graph onto the substrate, I know exactly along which path their interconnection is going to be. So now our algorithm is going to work in two steps. And the first one is a pre-processing routine in which we mold the substrate tree into a nicer form. And uh, here we do two things. The first one is we ensure that all the nodes in the substrate where I can actually map some compute power onto, namely all the non-leaves in the substrate which have capacity, these I move onto the leaves. So how do I do this? I simply attach another child to such a node with capacity, the red one right here, and um, transfer all the capacity onto this new leaf and make it have the same cost. And now I ensure that I cannot map anything onto this node and 
I add an edge which just allows for anything to be mapped without any further cost. The second preprocessing step is to ensure that our substrate is indeed not only a tree but a binary tree. How do I do that? Well, whenever I have some, some node with more than two children, then I basically insert a layer in between. I add this red node and map, merge, map some of the children from this node to the red node. And again, I have to uh, adapt the capacity and the cost of the nodes and edges here accordingly. Now this preprocessing is pretty simple and straightforward, and indeed it also runs in linear time. And it can also be applied to other algorithms because, for example, the work of Balani and others, they provide an algorithm that only works on binary trees where only the leaves have some non-negative capacity. And this, with this preprocessing, we can lift their algorithm to work on general tree substrates. Step two of our algorithm is based on a dynamic programming approach and it works on the substrate tree and works itself from the leaves bottom up to the root of the tree. So how does this work in more detail? Well, as I said, bottom up and we do the following for every leaf. So for every subset R of request nodes, we check how much it costs to map R onto the leaf. So here we have two costs. First of all, we have the cost of mapping all the nodes onto the leaf. And the second cost is to map all of the edges that are between R and the rest of the request graph. And we need to map them onto this edge. This is because this is the only way to somehow send the capacity along the substrate graph. Of course, for both the node and the edge mappings, we need to ensure that the capacities of the leaf and the edge incident are respected. Once we're done with this step, once we computed the cost to map every subset R onto every leaf, we can go a level up and compute the cost of mapping some subset R onto a non-leaf. Here we need to check every partition of R into two parts, A and B, and compute the cost of mapping A onto the left child and B onto the right child of our substrate node. And of course, as the remaining nodes of the request are going to be mapped outside of the substree, these right here, any of the orange edges are going to be mapped onto paths that go through the orange edge of the substrate. Note that edges be between A and B are not going through the orange edges are, as they are contained within R. Their path is going along the two black edges here within the substrate. But these costs we have already attributed for when we con consider the substrate nodes on the level below. Finally, once we reach the root of the request, we need to compute the minimum cost of mapping all of the request nodes onto it and then we are done. Lastly, I'd like to briefly present our small experimental evalu evaluation. Lastly, I'd like to briefly present our small experimental evaluation. Here, we check the performance of our algorithm on some synthetic input. For our requests, we used Erdos Renry graphs on five to 12 nodes and with an edge probability between 10% and 100%. For our substrates, we use forward abstractions of fat trees with um, 16 up to 1024 servers and up to 145 switches. If we look at the running time of our algorithm, depending on the request size and the substrate graph size, then we can see that the running time increases polynomially within the size of the substrate graph but exponentially with growing request size. We also compared our algorithm with two benchmarks uh, within the virtual network embedding scene, namely with an IP formulation as well as the Vine heuristic. Here in the Vine heuristic first computes an LP relaxation of the problem, 
and then uh, gives multiple attempts of resolving the fractional solution by randomized rounding and outputs the best solution found. Both the LP relaxation as well as the IP are run with Gurobi. Uh, here in, for the IP, we set the time limit to be 200 times the time that our algorithm needed on the same instance. We could observe that the IP formulation is slower than our algorithm by a factor of at least 10 in almost all of the instances. And for some instances, the IP wasn't even able to find an initial feasible solution within the time limit. And further, we observed that the integer programming algorithm had most problems whenever the request graphs were very dense or had a very high edge probability. And this is uh, an area where our dynamic programming algorithm is basically immune to. It doesn't really care about the density of the request graph. As for Vine, also Vine is slower than our algorithm in most of the instances. But more importantly, Vine only produces feasible solutions for roughly a quarter of the instances we have. And further, we could observe that the solution quality and the number of feasible solutions uh, decreases whenever the substrate graph or the fat tree size grew. But uh, one also has to notice here that uh, we could observe that Vine handles very dense requests way better than the integer programming algorithm. Lastly, if we look, if we take a close look at the few feasible solutions where Vine was faster than our algorithm, we can see that Vine produced a factor of 3.6 approximation and uh, it took roughly half of the time for the solution to be produced. So let's conclude. So what are our contributions? We provided the first combinatorial exact algorithm for the virtual network embedding problem for tree substrates. And uh, our algorithm provided a running time that depends exponentially only on the number of nodes in the request and polynomial in the rest of the input size. And hence, the algorithm performs very well on small or medium-sized requests. So this directly leads into one of our first questions. What do we do with bigger requests? So one option that we could do is a pre-clustering of the request nodes. So what this does is we join certain request nodes and treat them as a single nodes for our algorithm. Of course, with this, we would lose the optimality possibly but still it might yield a very efficient algorithm for bigger requests. Next, I would like to address the point of memory consumption. Our algorithm uses a lot of memory, namely roughly exponentially again in the size of the number of the request, number of nodes in the request. And it would be very interesting to see whether we can improve this memory consumption to be polynomial in the input size. And finally, we would be very happy to find more challenges where we can uh, apply data reduction or uh, find parameterized algorithmics within the area of network embedding. Thank you very much.